As we film, the world is on edge at the danger of a regional war breaking out in the Middle East, and worse. Last week, Israel carried out assassinations of leaders of both Hezbollah and Hamas while they were in the countries of Lebanon and Iran. And now U.S. politicians and media are making a big deal about how Israel is bracing for military retaliation from Hezbollah and even more dangerously from Iran. Israel has been bracing for a major retaliation by Iran and Hezbollah in response to the killings of senior officials. All this holds the profound danger of escalating into a wider war in the Middle East. This includes the threat of direct, all-out military confrontation between Israel, which holds a major nuclear arsenal, and Iran, which, while not as powerful as Israel, is a major military force in the region. Even more dangerously, Israel is backed every step of the way by the U.S., and China and Russia have alliances with Iran. A regional war could very easily draw in these imperialist gangsters, all of whom possess enough nukes to destroy life on Earth as we know it many times over. So this situation is extremely dangerous, and no one knows how it will develop. But there is one thing that we do know, and that needs to be made clear over and over again. If there is a wider war, the U.S. will bear the greatest blame. This includes genocide Joe Biden, and yes, cold-blooded Kamala Harris. And the Republicans are behind this too, and Trump wouldn't be any better. The U.S. would mainly be to blame. Why? Because the U.S. is backing Israel to the hilt as Israel is provoking all of this. It was Israel that bombed Lebanon's capital city last week. Israel killed 20 civilians and assassinated a leader of Hezbollah. This is a crime, and it's a provocation. But the U.S. didn't distance themselves from this. No, the U.S. is still sending billions of dollars of high-powered weaponry and bombs to be sure that Israel can hit even harder and more violently going forward. The U.S. is responsible. Or think about this. The person that Israel assassinated in Iran was Hamas's lead negotiator. The assassination of a Hamas leader overnight that could have major repercussions for the war in Gaza. Ismail Haniya, a political leader who is one of the chief negotiators in the ceasefire talks, was killed in Iran just after attending the inauguration of the country's new leader. It is literally difficult to think of a more blatant way for Israel to say fuck you to the prospects of a ceasefire than to kill the person they're supposed to be working with to achieve that ceasefire. But this didn't make the U.S. pull back their support. No, they've doubled down. The U.S. is responsible. And then there's this. Israel carried out this assassination of Hamas's lead negotiator while he was on Iranian soil, right at the time that Iran was inaugurating their new president. That's right, Israel blatantly violated Iran's national sovereignty, and they did it on a day that more than almost any other day Iran couldn't downplay or ignore. This is a crime, a war crime, and a provocation. And the U.S. is still standing with Israel. The U.S. is responsible. And then there's Israel's one-sided genocidal slaughter of the Palestinians trapped in Gaza. Israel has killed over 40,000 people since last October, nearly half of them children, with countless others still uncounted because they are buried under rubble. It has forced almost the entire population of Gaza to flee their homes, then flee their refugee camps, then their makeshift shelters outside hospitals and schools, their tents in the sand again and again, only to be bombed as they flee. Israel is blocking food and aid and medicine from getting in. Completely preventable diseases are spreading, like polio, and Israel won't let in the vaccines. And none of this is accidental or incidental. Just this past Monday, Israeli finance minister Bazalel Smotrich said openly that starving two million Gazans to death may be right and moral, but that the world won't let us. Bullshit. That is exactly what they are doing, and the U.S. is continuing to stand next to them every step of the way. The U.S. is arming Israel, justifying its actions, promising to stand behind it if a further war, a wider war, breaks out. And the U.S. is doing all of this because Israel plays a major role in enforcing the U.S.'s strategic interests and domination in the Middle East and really all over the world. So don't be fooled by Biden and Kamala's talk 
of wanting a ceasefire. Don't be fooled by their claims of working to prevent a wider war. And don't believe Kamala and her phony sympathy for the Palestinian people in Gaza. Sure, she and Genocide Joe might wish that Israel would wage its genocide against Gaza in a way that wasn't quite so blatant. They might hope that things don't spiral into a wider war and even a world war. But whatever they say, every day their actions are speaking louder than words. Through countless deaths and misery, through the bipartisan cheering that we saw when Netanyahu came to Congress with Republicans and Democrats standing together in euphoric standing ovations for this mass murderer, they are showing in a million ways that there is nothing that Israel has done or is currently poised to do that will shake their support for Israel. These rulers, both the Republicans and the Democrats, are monsters. They're mass murderers. They are drenched in the blood of the Palestinian people and they are backing genocidal maniacs in Israel without pause. So whatever happens, let's be clear. The rulers of this country are responsible and we are responsible to stop them.